Hello everyone. Welcome to this video. Let us solve few more problems on first module of basic electronics and communication engineering. An integrated circuit that produces an open loop gain of 100 is to be used as a basis of an amplifier stage having a precise voltage gain of 20. Here we need to determine the amount of feedback required. They are asking to calculate the amount of feedback required and there is an amplifier circuit. This is the amplifier and the feedback network will be having a feedback ratio beta. They are asking to calculate what is beta by giving this amplifier gain as 100. Right? So we can assume here the feedback will be a negative feedback. Let's assume the feedback is negative. Okay. So for the negative feedback we know that the overall gain of the amplifier G is equal to AV divided by 1 plus beta times AV. What is AV here? AV is given that is open loop gain without feedback that is 100. Open loop gain in the sense there is no loop here, there is no feedback here. So this is AV. And precise voltage gain means this is the overall feedback. That's why here G is equal to 20 we can consider. Since the overall gain if you observe and the uh, open loop gain if you observe, open loop gain is more than the precise gain or the overall gain. So open loop gain is greater means this is a negative feedback. That is also the way we can consider this. So for the negative feedback this is the expression and here we need to find out this beta. Let us rearrange this expression. Let us rearrange by multiplying this to the denominator it becomes g overall gain plus g into beta times av is equal to av we can also write it as g beta times av is equal to av minus overall gain here we need to we are interested in calculating beta that's why i am writing the expression for beta av minus g divided by here it is g into av now this is the expression to calculate beta we know that uh, we know the expression uh, we know the values for av g as well as this so here let me rearrange this again minus g divided by g into av here av av get cancelled here g g get cancelled so the remaining expression is it is very simple av this much is remain so let us substitute the values 1 divided by g is 20 minus 1 divided by av is 100 calculate this it, it is 0 0.04 so 0 0.04 is the feedback required to get that much of precise gain that is 20 so the next problem is on operational amplifier an operational amplifier operating with the negative feedback produces an output voltage of 2 volts output voltage is 2 volts here and when supplied with the input of 400 micro volts you can observe here this is an input voltage determine the value of closed loop voltage gain they are asking to calculate av closed loop okay the closed loop voltage gain is v out divided by v in we can consider why because they are telling it is a negative feedback but they have not given any other values other than input and output that's why here we can directly substitute the values for output and input as 2 volts divided by 400 micro means it is 10 power minus 6. So we are going to get the gain as 5000. Okay. So if you want to represent this in dB, generally the voltage gain, current gain and power gains are going to be represented in dB. If you want to represent this AV in dB, we need to take 20 log of 5000. If you calculate this, it becomes 74 dB. Okay. If they ask to calculate or uh, put the value in dB, you can calculate like this. This is for voltage gain. Similarly, if, if the current gain is asked, it is, uh, let me take it as AI. Suppose if the value of current gain is something like this, we can also take 20 log of that value okay, to represent it in dB. If it is a power gain, we need to take as 10 log of that power gain okay for power gain we need to take it as 10 log for current gain and voltage gain we need to take it as 20 log remember this 
and the next problem here again with the operational amplifier as an input resistance of 2 mega ohm let me write it as r in is equal to 2 mega mega means it is 2, uh, 2 into 10 raised to 6 it is mega and they have given the input voltage v in that is 5 millivolts okay determine the input current we need to calculate the current so it is very simple again i is equal to v by r so i at the input is v at the input divided by r at the input it is a straightforward expression v by r 5 divided by 2 into 10 raised to 6 yeah, home it is 2.5 nano ampere okay you might get the value like 2.5 into 10 raised to minus 9 minus 9 in the sense it is nano the next problem is again on uh, operational amplifier we need to determine the slew rate here a perfect rectangular pulse is applied to the input of an op amp if it takes 4 microseconds for the input voltage to change from minus 5 to plus 5 it is changing its value from minus 5 volts to plus 5 volts in 4 microseconds 4 microseconds is the time required for changing its value okay from uh, minus 5 to plus 5 so slew rate is that first we need to understand what is slew rate if you remember the slew rate expression it is rate of change of voltage at the output that is delta v out divided by delta t that is what time is so here the voltage is given from minus 5 volt to plus 5 volt uh, so it is totally 10 volts and the time taken for this is 4 microsecond 4 microsecond is 4 into 10 raised to minus 6 so if we calculate this it becomes 2.5 volts per microsecond this is how we can calculate and here delta v out means the change in voltage it is changing from minus 5 to plus 5 that's why i am taking it as 10 volts the next problem here again it is on uh, slew rate you can observe a wide band amplifier it is an operational amplifier has a slew rate of 15 volts per microsecond let me write first slew rate is 15 volts per microsecond if the amplifier is used in a circuit with a voltage gain of 20 here the voltage gain is given it is 20 and a perfect step input is applied of 100 millivolts is applied as input step input is again a square wave which is having an uh, input voltage let me call it as v in as 100 millivolts and determine the time taken for the output to change uh, level so here again we need to write the expression for slew rate uh, that is slew rate expression we have used in the previous problem also it is delta v out divided by delta t right here we need to calculate the determine the time taken means we need to calculate here the time okay so in the slew rate expression we will be having v out but they have not given v out in our problem first we need to calculate what is v out what is the change in voltage from zero to what extent it is going to change to calculate that we can use this av and v in we know that the voltage gain av is equal to v out divided by v in simply it is v out by v in so what is v out here v out is uh, we need to calculate v out v out divided by v in is 100 millivolts will be equal to the gain 20 so if we uh, rearrange this we can write the expression for v out and it is 2000 millivolts okay 2000 milli in the sense it is 2000 into 10 raised to minus 3 volts okay it is uh, round up to 2 volts okay now we can use this formula of slew rate and we can calculate delta t delta t is the time they have asked to calculate delta v out divided by slew rate they have given the slew rate so delta v out is from 0 to this this is 2000 into 10 raised to minus 3 divided by slew rate is 15 volts per microsecond if you calculate this it becomes 0.133 microseconds this is what the time taken by the amplifier to change its output from 0 to this value and then the next problem again it is an operational amplifier here the voltage gain is given 
okay and the input resistance is given lower cut off frequency and upper cut off frequency is given here we need to devise a circuit so to satisfy the above specification using an op amp here we need to understand one concept this is an uh, operational amplifier which is having an input at the inverting terminal for minus you can observe if we connect the two capacitors like this c in and cf what happens once we add these two capacitors we can modify the frequency response of this we can modify the frequency response in other words we can say we can modify the bandwidth of this so if you look at the voltage gain versus frequency curve this is an frequency response of this amplifier this is a frequency response curve of an amplifier this seen and cf is going to predict the lower cut off frequency as well as upper cut off frequency if we are going to vary the capacitor value c in and r in similarly cf and rf we can expect the value called f1 and f2 we know that f1 is the lower cut off frequency and f2 is the higher cut off frequency higher the f2 and lower f1 we are going to get maximum bandwidth if f2 is smaller and f1 is uh, higher value we are going to get less bandwidth right so to vary this frequencies upper and lower cut off frequencies we can choose c in and cf carefully this is what the concept behind uh, writing the frequency response or choosing the frequency response or designing the amplifier to operate in a particular bandwidth by using the values of c in and cf now let us come back to the problem here what they have asked we need to devise a circuit to satisfy these conditions the lower cut off frequency should be this and upper cut off frequency should be this with the input resistance of this and voltage gain of this much so again we need to use the frequency f1 and f2 formulas and we need to calculate the unknowns here let us take the gain av here it is given as 100 but uh, because of we are treating the amplifier as inverting amplifier obviously we will be having minus 100 at our gain okay the inverting amplifier will be given giving the gain negative we know that AV is equal to minus RF divided by R1. This is the expression. So let us take it as minus. Gain is minus. So we can calculate RF here. Here the input resistance is given. This is R1, 10K. But they have not given what is RF. So we need to calculate this RF. Why? Because we need to design a circuit. We design a circuit in the sense we need to calculate the unknowns. Here RF we need to calculate and also cf we need to calculate okay so rf by using this expression it is uh, rf is equal to the gain that is av into r in we can use uh, r r1 so here it becomes 100 into 10 kilo ohm r in is 10k here they have given gain is 100 i have cancelled this minus and minus so the value of rf becomes 100 kilo ohm okay this is rf now we need to choose uh, 1000 kilo ohm rf now to calculate c in capacitance c in we need to calculate let us use this formula f1 why because they have given the lower cutoff frequency so the formula for f1 is 0.159 divided by c in into r in right we know what is the value of r in and what is the value of f1 so we can easily calculate c in as 0.159 divided by the frequency 1 into r in or r1 so this if you substitute the values c in becomes 63 into 10 raised to minus 9 farad we can write it as 63 nano farad 10 raised to minus means minus 9 means it is nano farad that is c in similarly we need to calculate cf now we got rf we got c in now we need to calculate cf cf we can get from the second expression of the frequency that is higher cutoff frequency f2 uh, f2 is again 0.159 divided by cf into rf so if you rearrange the expression and write for cf it becomes 0.159 divided by 
F2 into RF. RF we have calculated and we know C, uh, we know the frequency. So we can calculate CF and the value of CF is 10.6 into 10 raised to minus 12. Or else we can write it as 10.6 picofarad. Pico means it is 10 raised to minus 2, uh, 12. Nano means it is 10 raised to minus 9. This is how we can design the circuit. So in the circuit now we can put the values as if this is an amplifier with the, these values of capacitor C1 and there is a resistance here. One more feedback resistance here. This is RF and one more capacitor CF here. Now we can put the values of these and we can design a circuit we want. Okay. Now the gain will be 100 for this. If they ask you to design a circuit or devise a circuit to satisfy the above condition, we need to write the values here. Write C, C in value here, write RF value, sorry R1, RF here and CF here. Okay, next we have problem on oscillators. Determine the frequency of oscillation of a three-stage ladder network. This is an uh, RC phase shift oscillator. Okay, this is an RC phase shift oscillator. Here we are using three stages of uh, the feedback network. We will be having three RC stages and they have given the value of C and R. They have given single C and single R means we need to assume that R1, R2, R3 and C1, C2, C3 are same values which will be equal to uh, R. Okay. So here we know the formula for to calculate the frequency, determine the frequency of oscillation. For three stages, it is F is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi root 6 into RC. Why it is root 6 means? In the formula we will be having the general formula is 1 divided by 2 pi. Here it is 2N RC. 2N means if it is three stages, 3 2 is a 6. That's why here root 6 is to be used. And 1 divided by 2 pi, pi is 2 into 3.14 and root 6. The value of R is given 10 kilo ohm, 10 power 10 into 10 power 3 into 10 nano farad, it is 10 power 9. So if you calculate the frequency uh, value, it becomes 6, 4, 7 hertz. This is the frequency of oscillation this ampl oscillator is going to give. And one more problem on uh, oscillator that is Weinbridge oscillator. This Weinbridge oscillator based on the operational amplifier. Here C1, C2 are equal, equal to 100 nanofarad. Determine the output frequency. Here also we need to calculate what is F from this Weinbridge oscillator. Produced by an arrangement where R1 equal to R2 equal to 1 kilo ohm and R1, R2 equal to 6 kilo ohm. There are two cases A and B. Let us calculate the frequency for the first case and the frequency expression for the Weinbridge oscillator is simple. It is 2 pi C into R or 2 pi RC. If you substitute this for the first case, let us consider the first case 1 divided by 2 pi, uh, put the value of R as 1 kilo ohm, 1 into 10 power 3, and C as 100 nano, that is 10 power 9. And the frequency we are going to get is 1.59 uh, kilohertz. Okay. And similarly, B, substitute the values uh, of R1, R2 as 6K, just replace the 2 pi, C value is same, 1 into, oh sorry, 6 into 10 raised to 3 into 100 nanofarad. So if you substitute this and calculate, it becomes 265 hertz. Okay. This is how we can calculate the frequency of oscillation, which the Weinbridge oscillator is going to keep.